want to thank everyone. Everyone knows everyone. We probably don't need introductions. And uh, yeah, we can go ahead and get started. Thanks, Keith, for setting us up and you're doing a recording, which is great, so we can share that out. Christina, do you want to start? Sure. Uh, sure, let's let's get started. <laughs> good morning and good afternoon and also good evening um, to to this latest edition of the Mahara User Group meeting. And um, today's plan is that I'll just tell you a little bit about the new things that are coming up in Mahara Land in spring because we we are just getting started with the nice weather over here in New Zealand. And then Roger is giving us an update on what is happening at Solent University. So let's get right into it. Um, the first thing that I wanted to briefly to talk about is our new Mahara Partner Program. Um, because we have announced it earlier in September. And so just a quick introduction to it, because there are a number of changes uh, compared to the old program that um, are of interest to the community, I think. Um, so in the past, we always only had uh, companies being able to join the Mahara Partner Program because it was for um, companies offering services around Mahara. However, we have a number of um, very active contributors like Pace University and also Solent um, and Purchase College, of course, as well with making um, this of web webinar room available every time for the meetings, and also many others who contribute code, who contribute ideas um, that we were not really able to um, also give them a voice in, in the partner program and make them more visible to the rest of the community. And therefore, we decided to go with two tracks of the partner program namely one for business partners and one for other supporters. So the business partner track is fairly similar to what we had in the past, that it is companies that offer Mahara services um, who can join the partner program. And the supporter track is for other organizations or in some cases even individuals um, who have been supporting the Mahara project already or are planning to ramp up their contributions, their active contributions to the project. In contrast to a number of other partner programs, though, we um, decided not to impose a fee on our partners, be it business partners or supporters, um, because we are more interested in active contributions of people from the community. So to make it um, more visible to the rest of the community that there are support companies and that it's not just a catalyst that supports the project, but that there are others around the world that can also offer Mahara services. And for the supporters, of course, be, because um, they already do not get any money for their contributions, that they get an acknowledgement of the support of the project by doing a number of things that um, help the project get further along, as I already mentioned, either through code contributions, through contributing ideas and fleshing them out, um, giving uh, feedback that helps us to improve the software, or also organizing events like this Mahara user group, or Mahara Hui's, or any other event or online contributions that um, enhance what we can offer to the community. And um, all the details about how to become a partner, be it business partner or supporter, can be found on our website at mahara.org partners. There we've also published the partner guide, which outlines all the benefits and also responsibilities. And then the application process is very simple. Um, because we do not have to worry about any legal things really since there, there are no hard obligations um, for partners. It is that partners are expected to contribute um, to Mahara and of course if um, somebody or a company or an organization becomes a partner but doesn't actually really contribute then of course we would also reevaluate and see if 
um, there can be changes made uh, over another period of time so that they can really also achieve the goal of um, becoming more active. And so as a core project, of course, we also want to support our partners and also that way with the, the rest of the community in um, being more in touch with them and having events organized or more communication around it um, to also encourage people to become partners and seeing that they get uh, some value out of that. And so anybody interested in the program can let us know and make a proposal of how they want to become active in the community if they haven't already been. Are there any questions from the crowd? And so far, actually, we, we pretty much only have Mahara partners in the audience today. Um, both Solent University and Pace University have joined as supporters, which is really fantastic because um, you two have really been um, active supporters for a number of years of the project already. So I'm really happy that we can now also make you official partners. And if there aren't any questions, I think I'll just continue. And Hi, the, yeah, I was just okay. wondering. Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering um, what has been the response um, so far? Have you received other interest from other schools that perhaps aren't involved in Mug? That you know, I'm just wondering if this might be a way to pull people into Mug a little bit more. If you know they felt like they had a more you know formal role <laughs> to play, mm -hmm. or you know had something that they could um, you know officially uh, name themselves uh, to you know to to kind of uh, I don't know lure them into mug a little bit more with this this kind of role. I'm just curious what kind of response you've gotten, if any, from mm -hmm. other schools in the U.S. Not so much yet, Beth. Mm -hmm. um, and that might be because they, they are still at the beginning of their new semesters or haven't really seen it as an option for them because they haven't yet contributed so much. And so that is something that um, we will need to do over the next few weeks a bit more, seeing who else we can invite because we, we have been inviting um, a number of our already active contributors. Um, like yourself and, and others and also for the partners inviting um, number that we know offer Mahara services but haven't really been partners in the past so that yeah. we can encourage them to also apply um, and therefore see how they can become act active. It's um, what, what we had a little bit is that some people just thought, oh, because there are no fees, it's just easy for us to join. But we, we do also want to see the active contribution so that it is an active partnership and not just a silent one. And so that's that's where we are in discussion with with a few people around. Okay, how do you see your contributions? Where do you see them? What what is achievable for you? Because we we don't want to make things um, extraordinarily difficult. Um, in in saying that um, they somebody has to go out of their way entirely and suddenly start programming in order to become a partner but that it is things that are achievable and that can also be put, um, say, into, into a regular week or that can be accomplished by somebody also on a more regular basis instead of just saying, oh, this is so insurmountably difficult that then we wouldn't get any contributions back. And so just finding the things sometimes of how somebody can contribute takes a little bit of time, but we, we are definitely on the lookout for um, organizations that do want to join or that have the the capacity also to contribute more regularly and are interested in that also maybe because they haven't really been doing it in the past but would very much like to and then see how we can work with them. So if you have anybody that you think well we've already been in discussion with them a few times and they are interested they, they might be good then please do let me know and we can get in touch with them. Yeah, I'm wondering if you followed up with Teachers College or Pratt yet. I know Pratt is kind of trying to find someone to take ownership of Mahara any portfolios since 
since that change, you know, with the staff happened? Yeah, um, those are definitely possibilities. I um, unfortunately haven't had time to follow up with everyone yet uh, yeah. due to time constraints on my end, but um, these are definitely discussions we can have. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Okay, then uh, let's take a quick look at what's actually coming up later in this month. Um, seems like every month has some some bigger announcements uh, this this spring. And so, as as you all know, Mahara 15.10 is kind of on the way to you. We, we are now on release candidate state. And uh, just hope to get a little bit more testing done also by community members, getting some feedback from them in what works, what doesn't work. And so I just want to give you a very brief tour of some of the very visible features uh, that you can see in Mahara 15.10. And so one of oh, the most obvious one is that we are going to have new themes. Our current themes um, have been in existence for a number of years. And so we, we thought it's really time that we freshen things up a bit, um, just uh, bring a new, yeah, bring some new air in and um, provide you with more new themes that um, now also take advantage of the new CSS and HTML that we put in there so that um, we can achieve a more modern look. So at the moment, we actually have five themes. I only displayed four of them here because the other one isn't, um, is the raw theme, but it could actually also be used for a, as a proper theme itself. So we have the default theme, then the primary school theme, which is extremely colorful. Again, has a few more icons in there than the other themes. And then we have on the bottom left, we have um, ocean, which is a light blue theme. And on the bottom right, we have the modern theme. Um, there's definitely still the possibility to include more themes, but for Mahara 15.10, we decided to go with these four plus the raw option um, because we are still uh, making changes to our CSS and HTML and so are still refining things while we have been developing those themes and um, see how we can still make things also more flexible and then might have a couple more options in there for 1604 uh, next year. And we were able to make all those theme changes and give them this modern look and feel because we are basing our CSS and HTML now on Bootstrap. So we switched all our um, HTML, CSS, and also um, already a good chunk of the JavaScript out in order to replace it with Bootstrap. And that allows us to um, have this modern look and feel. Now all themes are responsive on mobile devices. Um, every theme can be viewed nicely in the past that was on the, the, the default theme that had this capacity. And we also work with the font awesome icons that are built directly into Bootstrap, making it possible to um, have consistent icons throughout that are actually being created really, really easily. So if you install Mahara, don't like one of the icons and prefer to use a different one, you don't even have to um, make up your own icons, but you just search the font awesome um, gallery, uh, yeah, icon set and choose the icon that suits your needs, um, change the value in the CSS, and you're pretty much done with it. And so you can very quickly make even small changes and um, get started. Roger, we are using Bootstrap version 3. And um, yes, we know that Bootstrap 4 is coming, as, but it is still in the alpha state. So that will be something that we are looking for uh, changing over for 16.10, so next October because um, it might still be too fresh in order to implement it in 16.04. So the idea right now is that um, we are starting with Bootstrap now for 15.10, get the release out, and then see what other changes might need to be made for 16.04, in particular around um, removing our old JavaScript and replacing it either with um, the JavaScript that comes in Bootstrap or other jQuery. 
and then um, yeah, get just some of the code also updated uh, to more modern times. And yes, we went immediately with um, Bootstrap 3 because it was already well supported when we started that process at, at the end of last year. And um, therefore, we are quite different to Moodle because current versions of Moodle are still on version 2.3, I believe. Um, but hopefully, they'll also be getting updated. The nice thing of having switched to Bootstrap is that a lot of other applications and frameworks also use that. And therefore, it will become easier for a lot of, um, for a lot of organizations to achieve a common look and feel across their applications um, because they use similar elements. And also because a lot of people are already familiar with Bootstrap, um, it will be easier for them to make changes to the theme because they are already familiar with the language. But there are some other notable um, changes and some of them, especially usability improvements, we could make um, because of Bootstrap or did it as part of the revamping of the CSS and HTML, which was primarily done by um, our front-end developers at Catalyst. And they've been working really, really hard on that um, over the, yeah, since about last um, mid-November, December, um, having worked continuously on improving things and switching things out, and therefore also already started changing the visual language of Mahara. And that meant moving buttons, um, unifying things a lot so that it is easier to style all the same things across Mahara, where in the past we sometimes had um, we sometimes use different versions. And so here's just a small sample of the usability improvements that we've made. Um, here you can see that we've made a change to the navigation within the groups so that, a, that, that the group navigation is now consistent and it is also more highlighted, making it possible for you to see directly which elements are in the group and how they relate to it. And that the group name is also always visible. Um, on the same screen, you can also see that the individual sections now in, um, that you have in the group have the section name and also the group name displayed. Um, in in, and that is for the areas where the, uh, the group name sometimes in the third level navigation there is not as immediately seen. And then also one improvement um, on the group homepage is that you can immediately edit this page instead of always having to go to the pages and then click the edit button on for the group homepage. So you don't just only have the settings there, but now also that edit button. Um, another um, nice feature that we, we've already been, um, or that everybody I think has been waiting for for many years, could now finally be implemented thanks to the Fen Universität in Hagen in Germany. And that is group, institution, and site journals. So you can now set up journals where anywhere in Mahara. And having institution and site journals really makes it very nice to also incorporate journals directly in templates, for example. And having group journals helps um, groups to work collaboratively um, on a blog or create a news, news journal and keep that updated. And that is a really fantastic functionality that we could implement. And we look forward to what you make from that. Another feature um, that consisted actually, uh, again, of a number of smaller features is that now instead of just seeing pages on the Shared With Me tab, um, on the My Pages blog, and also on the latest pages blog on, on the dashboard has now been revamped so that you actually always see your portfolios. So instead of seeing individual pages, you actually see the collection now and you know of how many pages that collection um, how many pages that collection contains. And that shortens the list of shared items that you can see on shared with me and also makes it easier, especially if you have um, student groups that submit the same collections that consist of uh, a number of pages to see just those collections instead of having to scroll through a very long list um, 
of pages and trying to find the uh, field that you have to look, get into as portal to the rest of the pages. And um, so, as I said, this happens in three places, namely on Shared With Me, on the My Pages blog, which has been renamed into My Portfolios, and then also on the Latest Pages blog, which is now the Latest Changes I Can View blog. And um, that'll hopefully be a very good improvement. And we have to thank Pratt Institute for that um, because they, they have been very much involved in that development work in order to get it done and also to implement it then. Another feature um, that has been implemented thanks to funding from Switch in Switzerland is that comments can now also be threaded, um, meaning that you can reply to a specific comment and that your comment then is placed underneath it. Um, so instead of just having a long list of comments and sometimes maybe not really knowing to which comment um, if one further down relates, you can now really group them um, like in forums. And um, those replies do take privacy um, into consideration. So if you reply to a private comment, only you and the author of the page will also see the reply. Whereas if you reply to a public comment, then um, you'll, everyone will be able to see that. We now also have um, a default page template um, because in the past, or Mahabai always comes with a standard three column layout, um, but some people really don't like that. And so what a site administrator can now do is that they can change that default layout for all the pages within Mahara that are going to be created in new. So it is not creating templates instead of um, set pages that people would copy, but this page template is really the one that changes the, the default layout of a page. And any new page will take that um, and use it as spaces. So if you prefer to always start with a two column layout and already two rows, then you can implement that here on the site level. And that feature um, was implemented thanks to funding from iCanvas 21 in Canada um, because they really needed it for uh, one of their new instances for a research project to make it easier to, in their case, also put other elements already directly on the page. But normally um, you would probably rather leave it empty because if you put a picture on the page template, suddenly every single instance, uh, every single new page that is being created on the instance will have that picture as well. Um, we also made some changes in the administration. Um, there are many more that I'm not going to show you. I'm really focusing here on, on the high um, level changes and some of the exciting features. And this change here is for reporting purposes and making it easier to actually see how many people have been active within a given month and not have those statistics change over time. So here's a feature that we implemented for the New Zealand Ministry of Education for my portfolio. And um, that one um, is not just for uh, for multi-tenanted Mahara sites, uh, but definitely also for individual ones, because on this the statistics screen, you will see um, how many active users there were within a given month and how many times they have logged in. So that is the logins part of the site statistics. And the nice thing is that you can also define your time frame. So per default, you always see the um, previous month, um, but you can also change it to two months or three months. The thing you would need to note for this statistics screen though is that the data will only be accurate from when you install um, Mahara 15.10 or that feature if you want to backport it to your instance because we needed to add some, um, some additional uh, columns into the database so that all that information is being collected because in the past we always replaced um, the last time you logged in and did not keep the old data, whereas now we keep whenever somebody logs in, put that into the database and that's where the logins come from. 
and then the active users is the number of distinct users within the time frame that you have chosen. And of course, you can also export those statistics in CSV format and then manipulate them further. Um, sorry, Keith, I didn't see your, uh, see your question earlier. Um, there are not different page templates for different institutions at the moment. We only implemented it for the site level because um, otherwise we, we, not, we, we don't really distinguish when we create a page whether it is in the institution or not. So there would be more work needed in order to achieve that, um, especially also around groups. And we always have to take into consideration when uh, when people are in multiple institutions, and therefore this is just a side feature for the time being. Uh, what you can also see here on the screen is that we've updated our um, graphing on for the site statistics um, in in all of the statistics. So there there's a new uh, JavaScript library being used that now works on servers and gives you uh, gives you a better better graphing engine. And uh, the colors in there can actually also just be adopted um, if you want to make those even match your theme. Um, another administrator change that is really useful, um, especially when you have to administer users manually when they don't come from your single sign-on or LDAP or from Moodle, is that you can now change the primary email address directly um, in the administration area. There's now a field for that. It um, makes that email address that you put in there the primary, but it leaves any previous emails as secondary email addresses in, in the profile of the users in case they do want to switch things back. And so this primary email change also works when you upload um, up update users via CSV file. Um, because in the past, um, the email address via CSV file was added but didn't immediately become the primary one. So this is a really nice change um, that helps us administer instances and end users more easily when there are just manual changes necessary. So where can you see a number of those features? Well, if you um, are not able to get a test site set up on your server or on your local machine, then you can use master.dev.mahata.org um, to test, uh, to see all those features and others. If you um, do register and want to become an administrator so you can also take a look in some of the administrative areas, then please let me know. Um, and we can change your permissions there to administrator. Otherwise, of course, you can also um, install Mahara 15.10 on a test server or ask your IT department to actually already um, upgrade a test server of your current instance, just so you see how would it work with your own data, um, what might still be needed in order to make changes, um, and then also help us a little bit with the testing um, so that we see how does it behave, say, on a very large data set in a MySQL database, or when somebody has plugins installed, what happens, and all those things. So any testing that you can do would be very much appreciated. Um, in terms of plugins, since I just mentioned them, the plugin authors will need to update their plugins themselves. And um, that is why Mahara 15.04, that is the last version before we implemented Bootstrap, is going to be a longer, or will, going to, will have a longer release cycle and will go out of support only in October 2017. So we extended um, the, the, the shelf life of 15.04 for, uh, by one year so that it's not just supported for a year and a half, but for two and a half years in order to give institutions that have a lot of customizations enough time to upgrade and make sure that they can also go through enough testing. If you are testing the release candidate, please, like usual, feel free to give us feedback on it. And um, if that can be done in the forums or if you want to report any issues that you come across, then please feel free to do that directly on our bug tracker. 
So that was just a very quick run through of uh, some of the new features in Mahara 15.10. Um, the list of new features might seem very small. Currently, I think we've counted 16 or 17. However, Bootstrap and the new themes are so massive that um, uh, but they are only represented by, by one um, feature request in the tracker, so that it's a little bit deceiving. And um, we haven't really listed all these small um, usability improvements that we've made as individual items, so they usually just flow again into this one huge feature improvement, even though they are a bunch of smaller um, improvements as well that will hopefully make the life again easier for you when you switch to that version in order to yeah, have more functionality available and also make it, make it easier for your users. Yes, Roger, I agree. Bootstrap and the new themes definitely will make a big difference and uh, give us a lot of opportunities um, for future improvements because now that we are on a framework, we can take advantage of the things that are being implemented in Bootstrap. And then, of course, also with the themes, um, and that's the, the part I'll be talking about next. Uh, we, we do can be more flexible or people can use regular bootstrap functionalities in order to extend um, the functionalities that we have already built into Mahara. And so there'll definitely be uh, um, some more improvements for 16.04. What we had to do with bootstrap for this release really is kind of look at the, the minimum um, the minimum features and requirements that we need to get done in order to make the release and in order to implement Bootstrap fully, because it wasn't possible to say, okay, let's let's keep some of the old themes and the old CSS and let's do some of the rest in Bootstrap because there were so many changes that it was better for us to simply move everything to Bootstrap and. Um, then take that as a basis and make future improvements for um, further further releases. So since I already mentioned um, that we now have Bootstrap and Themes, I, I bet you're really curious on how you can actually start on your own theme if you wanted to give it a go or if, um, if you just want to see what the process is. Um, but just quick reading Linda. Hi, Linda. Oh, yes, fantastic. Yes, themes is usually um, themes and skins, what, what people discover first when, um, when they start with Mahara, because that's how they can personalize their themes. And so let's take a quick look at what theming in Mahara with Bootstrap actually now means. Um, we debated a long time of how to how to work with Bootstrap and how to implement um, implement it for theming, and we now have two options. The option one is the one that more people are going to be familiar with is that you can change and implement regular CSS. Um, that means that you can. Um, create a theme, put a style sheet in, and then put all the styles that you want to use in there. That is um, most likely going to be a bit work because you will need to look at the individual styles that we implemented and then um, yeah, put those into your style sheet. Um, and therefore, a better version and also one that is more flexible would be to use the functionality on which we've um, build our themes, and that is to use SAS and Gulp. And um, that really gives you a lot of flexibility. So SAS means that it's a syntactically awesome style sheet. It is an extension to CSS um, in which you can use variables, nested rules, mixins, inline imports, and many other things. So the basics that, that I, as non-developer and front-end developer and designer, get out of it is that you just have more flexibility available and that you define variables in your theme and then only have to change those variables 
in order to achieve a different behavior somewhere else. And um, that makes it possible for us to really be flexible and also achieve a very consistent look and feel across Mahara. And um, ideally, of course, also only make changes in one place or in a very few number of places and change everything in Mahara itself, um, where those styles are being used. And so just to give you a quick example, um, if you only want to change a few colors in Mahara, namely the primary color, in this case, here we have it in red, then the primary color in dark, that is text being used for headings, for example, or for other accented text. Um, and mid-tone and light-tone colors, those are those things for um, kind of where you see your name or the date um, on the left-hand side where we have latest changes I can view. So something that is a bit of secondary information. Then all you need to do is create your theme and then just change those few variables within the uh, variable file. And you get the result that you can see in the background. Um, and so that is a very quick thing if you say, well, we, we really only want to have one primary co color and like the rest of the theme that it is actually so very much white and gray, then that's all that is needed. But of course, as you've seen on the themes that I showed you earlier, there's much, much more that you can actually do. So you can still put a header in there if you want it. You can style, um, you can style blocks differently. You can uh, change the dashboard, of course, still, and you can change icons and a lot of things. And in order for you not having to discover that and how to do it, um, it's very helpful to read the instructions in the README file that is in the theme folder because that file um, tells any front-end developer and designer exactly of how to get started with SAS and Gulp because um, what SAS and Gulp means is that um, the, the style sheet actually needs to be compiled because all that you give um, in the theme is that you set variables and make other changes and then they need to be converted into the actual CSS that is then being used by Mahara. So there is an additional step to the theming process, but it is very streamlined already. So we, we made it so that a number of things are automated. But if you install Mahara now for the first time, um, or Mahara 15.10, you do have to remember, and you will also be remembered as part of the installation, um, that you have to create the CSS via make CSS, um, just a command on the command line, and then all the themes are being built. Um, we, we did debate for, for a bit of whether to go down this way or whether to actually provide the compiled CSS like Moodle does. Um, and so we, we did decide to go down the, um, the, the route that um, everyone needs to compile their CSS themselves when they make theme changes because that gives us just more flexibility. Um, if you download Mahara from, from the web as a zip file, the, the themes are already compiled there for you so that you can get started. But if you use it from source or want to make changes to your themes, then uh, the themes need to be compiled. And that was it. Unfortunately, I think I went a little bit um, longer than I intended to, but hopefully Roger will still, have en um, will still have enough time to also tell us what he's currently doing at Solent, because what I showed you right now was pretty much what the Mahara core team has been up to for the last month already before the 15.04 release in, in parts. And so I hope you do like some of the features and improvements and changes that um, we implemented. And 
will have the time to check them out, um, if not already used now later in the month, uh, or if you are needing or planning on waiting until 1604, of course, we'll make more changes in there. As far as the release schedule goes, um, we do want to release Mahara 15.10 still in October. So it should be coming within the next two weeks that we'll have the final release out there. And um, we'll, of course, also update the user manual. Hopefully also somewhere around that time, it might be slightly after the release. Um, but if you have any questions, please feel free just to let me know. And so unless there are any questions, over to you, Roger. Hi, that was uh, fantastic, Christina. Thank you very much. It was really, really useful information, um, especially around the themes and how the theme design works. It's really good. Especially for you, Roger. I'm, I'm, already very, I'm already totally excited what you'll make out of that on, on your instance. Yeah, well, we're we're um, we're relaunching our VLE and um, intranet next summer. We've got a new teaching building coming, and um, Mahara will be part of that. So it's a it's sort of a refreshed rebranding of the university going on at the moment, and um, and obviously our web presence is will be included. So these new themes and new um, uh, Bootstrap 3 is going to make that one a lot easier, but also much more exciting. You know, the things we can do with it is going to be um, that we could be a bit more adventurous, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. yeah. And Roger, what I can uh, show you in November when, when I'll be at Solent is that uh, there'll be another Mahara droid as well. Uh -huh. so, so Yeah. It's currently in the prototype phase. Um, a, a student worked on it for his engineering project, and so we we still have to make a number of um, number of um, just revisions and a um, little bit of further work and a bit more testing. And then hopefully also within the next few months or so we'll have an updated version of it, which will then also run on iOS devices. So. We are also kind of also need to think if we want to change the name or not, because Mahara Droid kind of alludes to it being an Android application. Um, but it will it, it is actually now being based on um, Apache Cordova, which used to be PhoneGap, so that we can build pla um, build the application cross platform, so that it can also be used on other devices. But so much only for that. That'll be for another talk at some point. Um, but yeah, right now I'm really excited to to hear about what Roger has to um, tell us from Solent. Well, um, I haven't really got many things to, I haven't got much to show you actually, because I wrote this down really quickly, just a sort of general update. I just sort of threw, the, threw this on the agenda quickly at the last minute. But um, just to run through, now for, for those not in the UK, I'm going to use the term a shit sandwich, which means there's some good stuff some bad stuff and some more good stuff. Um, so I'll start with some of the good stuff. Um, what we've done um, just recently is implemented Mahoodle again. We used one of the really old versions of the Mahara Moodle plugin um, quite a few years ago, but there was very there's a lot of limitations with it and issues. Um, the new version that uh, I think Aaron Wells worked on and released earlier this year. Um, we've now implemented that, so um, we've uh, we've implemented that um, on our Moodle, and there's lots and lots of lecturers that use it are very very happy that our um, assessment submission process is going to be a lot easier because that was the key thing that it's the the embedded assessment within Moodle. Um, rather than the students having to export their portfolios and upload them, and our academic services people are happy with that as well. Um, on uh, I can show you maybe next time I can show you what that looks like for people who have not seen it and how we're, we're going to use it. Um, we've opt. I'm just aware of the time, so I'm going to zoom through. We've um, we've been running with standard portfolio sizes of 250 megabytes at the moment, but um, on one of the courses, fashion course, they're needing a bit more. So what we've done is put an on request limit of one gigabyte for um, students on that course, but they need to request it. They need to show that they they actually need the space. Um, 
and they um, they just sort of basically put in a request for more space. Um, we are moving. We've got um, an IDAM, which is ID Management Identity and Access Management project on the go at the moment. It's probably not going to deliver for about a year to actually end users to see something of use. But one of the outputs of that is post graduation postgraduate access to alumni students so one of the key issues we've had with students is can I you know can I continue to access my portfolio after I've left and it's not a Mahara problem it's an institutional issue around ID management but we are very much working on that now and it's a much wider project but that should see students being able to continue to use their portfolio for a year two years whatever we set as a time limit after they've graduated from the university so I think that's going to be helpful um, as I mentioned at the very beginning, we may well move to 15, 10 at Christmas. We'll have to see if we can uh, sort of almost backport our existing theme so it doesn't ch change too much for students currently using it, if that makes sense. So we don't scare them. Um, our academic year runs from September through to sort of June. Um, so we, we don't want to really scare students halfway through. Um, and uh, no, don't say the word awesome. Awesome is when a volcano erupts in front of you and you live to tell the tale. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just reading the chat room here. Um, also, the other good news is um, I just want to um, mention that Christine has invited us to be a Mahara supporter and we've accepted that um, invitation. That's really good. Um, very, very pleased um, with that. So is our Director of uh, Learning and Teaching. So we're going to get that up on our external website over the next couple of weeks. I've spoken to our external relations, but um, with all these things, it's not high on their agenda, so I'm just going to have to push them to do that. Now, the um, not so good news um, is that our Postgraduate Certificate in Learning and Teaching for Higher Education, which is um, the course that all new teaching staff have to take when they become lecturers at Solent University and it's a recognized this is a sort of national um, qualification that all university lecturers um, need to hold as part of their contract in the UK they've been using Mahara and it was their program leader that originated introducing Mahara to um, the university in the first place they've actually stopped using it for this academic year. They did say they may revisit it, so maybe the new themes, new look and feel may help. Um, so that's a that's a bit of a sad news in a way. Their reason simply they found it too difficult to use, the lecturers found it too difficult to get on with, it was too confusing, wh whatever reasons. There's possibility it wasn't the right tool for the job they were trying to do as well. That is a possibility. Um, so that impacts all new teaching staff effectively. There's about 35 staff a year, maybe more, take that course. Um, on the other side, if they were having a bad experience with it, um, it's 35 people a year that aren't put off at the first hurdle with Mahara. So it could be good news. Um, I don't know. But that's one of the things that's not so um, good. And just to echo something Beth was saying much earlier about getting more people involved in the Mahara user group. And, you know, the, the audience is quite small this evening, this morning, this afternoon, depending where you are, um, is that... Um, we're running the Mahara um, Huey UK, um, which is on the 9th and 10th of November. We've definitely seen much fewer uh, submissions and um, proposals come in for that. Um, so it's a smaller conference than it was last year. The real key thing that I've noticed, though, and this is a UK thing, is the further education sector. There's hardly any representation from the further education sector now. Further education is the 16 years to 19, 18, 19 years. So I don't know if that's like in America, that's high school sort of age, um, pre-university sort of um, sector. That sector's had quite a lot of uh, cutbacks and uh, budget cutbacks. So I think there's a, a limitation there on staff development funding to actually send people to conferences, whereas, you know, previous years there have been more people. So that's a... I think it's a local thing, but I'm, I'm just wanting to know, has the audience shrunk in the UK? I'm not sure. Is it just more, you know, fewer people can engage? I'm not sure there, but um, that's uh, that's another thing that's sort of potentially impacting the community side of things is, is UK education funding. Now, so back on the good stuff, um, we are continuing the courses that are continuing this year with Mahara Uses PR and Communications, which was the 
uh, course, I presented a student interview with a student for that um, back at the AIBL conference um, for you. Um, um, we've got architectural and built environment students, we have fashion students, we have social work students, um, and the social works lecturer will be presenting at the UK conference next month. Um, marketing business students continuing to use. So we've got about a thousand students and all of them are using it for assessment purposes. Now, five, six years ago, we started using Mahara to enhance employability and get students building their digital self and so on. And in that time, it's now evolved to a platform that's used for assessment um, and either building portfolios of evidence, the PR and comm students are advertising themselves, architectural students are putting in plans and drawings and so on and images of uh, buildings and so on. So lots of different ones. The social workers, um, they're actually using it with their um, industry-based practice assessors. So these are social work students that are in the workplace and um, they're using it as a very private walled garden to record their um, experiences, work experience, working with um, patients. And um, so it's a very, very walled garden. So very specialist there. Um, but the, the one good thing, as we lose one course, the Postgraduate Certificate of Learning and Teaching, we've suddenly got 400 journalism students who have um, knocked on the door asking to use um, Mahara. And the reason is um, they are having problems with WordPress. Um, so the, the method they're using, we haven't started them yet, they start in a couple of weeks' time on this, is they write stories, news stories, as reporters, and there's an editorial team each week that um, then review the stories and publish the stories out to WordPress. Now, previously, the students have been putting all their stories and um, publish them all to WordPress as draft, and then the editors can then publish them out to the live blog. And WordPress has really suffered and is struggling, and they're finding it's not fit for the purpose they want it to be for this. Um, so Mahara to the rescue there. Um, what they're doing is um, sim it's very simple. There's about five or six different um, uh, modules that are taught across the journalism course. So there's various groups have been set up. The students are in that group, and then each week's editorial team that's nominated by the teacher are made group admin. So simply the students that are reporters put one uh, story per page, which includes the text, images, video, anything else they've gathered for the story. They then submit that page to the group. The group uh, administrators, which are the editors, can then review the stories, send them back to the students if they want them you know, better written or whatever reviewed. And the ones that are the best ones, the, be the, the best of them, they then get taken out, and at the moment they're cutting and pasting them, but we may do something different later. They're going to cut and paste them out onto their formal WordPress blog. So WordPress ends up just being the end point, but not the sort of production and editorial engine for this um, this process. So that's 400 journalism students um, that are suddenly on board and see it as the answer. Um, they're particularly interested in the mobile app um, because then they can start constructing their stories on the move on their phone. So there was a sort of win there. Um, and then really briefly, we've got about three minutes left, the future. Um, having uh, mentioned alumni and uh, postgraduate access and the other thing that was just a conversation that we've had the other day is this, uh, um, the marketing department, external relations, were wondering if it's possible to use Mahara so every student can have a university profile um, publicly. And my answer is, well, of course they can. It's already there. They just need to log in and they've got one. And they went away to think about that. So, again, it may take some time, but that's that suddenly the external relations marketing people have went, hmm, that's an interesting toy. Can we play with it, please? Um, so that's a really brief 12-minute roundup from Solent. Um, I don't know if there's anything anyone wants to ask me about any of those points. I'm just going to quickly look through the chat room um, and see what you've written. Wow, Roger, those were a lot of things that, and really, really good things to hear from Solent. And for the postgraduate certificate, maybe they are coming back at some point. And it would, would be really good, um, as I mentioned in the chat, that um, if we could meet with them or get more feedback from them, more specific feedback uh, to see if, if it's already some of the things that we know or if, it's, if it might actually be new things and see how 
how we could change them and what we could implement it um, to see if they were interested in then using Mahara again for their purposes. Mm. I think it's down to the course leader because the course leader has been driven to distraction by partly the way we use Mahara. So where, where we had to previously, and this was to do with some of our regulations before the students had to produce their portfolio, export it as a zip file, upload that zip file to the VLE. The lecturer then had to download it, unzip it, find the index or home HTML page, open it up as a static website, discover that half the embedded stuff didn't work because students had embedded whatever with different plugins and Embedly and stuff. And then they hadn't included a secret URL so the lecturer couldn't go back and see the live portfolio it was incredibly complicated um, and therefore there was many many places it could go wrong now I think moving to Mahood was going to save a lot of that problem um, again they were back with that um, I think also it was a change of course leader so the previous course leader was the person who said you know in the first place let's get a portfolio and phone me up and ask me which one to get um, so there's a, it's, it's a personality thing as well, a course leader thing. So it's someone we need to work on, and um, you know, um, you know, someone we need to work on, and and, and sort of, uh, you know, uh, sort of bring them back on board, maybe, or relook at what they want to do and how they want to do it. And I think that's always the thing where we have to actually step back from the technology and say, what's the process? What are you trying to achieve? Let's find the right technology for it, rather than I found some technology, let's shoehorn it into this process. So there's a there's a there's a double side thing there. Um, so uh, yeah, and just quickly back to the Mahara Huey, what I have I have to say, although there's fewer papers, um, they've been really good quality. There's some really interesting papers there. The program is possibly out tonight or tomorrow. I I need to check quickly check with Erin. I think there's some emails I need to write tonight. Um, they're going to publish it tomorrow. But we have got people coming. I'm just seeing Linda can't can't get here from Czech Republic, but we have got people coming from. Um, Denmark, Japan. Um, there's a delegation from Japan coming, which is a long way to come, but there you go, um, to present a poster. Um, and uh, obviously Christina, um, we've got Siggy coming over from um, uh, Germany. So we've got people coming from, you know, around and about the place. So we've got quite a few, few people, international visitors uh, joining us. So looking forward to that next month, um, if it doesn't cause me a nervous breakdown in the meantime. <laughs> Has anyone got any other further questions for me? Because I realise we're on, on to the hour, um, whichever hour it is for you. Thanks so much, Roger. That was really great. You had a lot to share. <laughs> so glad you're doing so well. Um, yeah, well, it was a quick list. I thought I'd just scroll down some ideas, and there you go. Um, that's that's where we are at the moment. Okay, great. And thanks, everyone, for joining. And we'll look to plan our next uh, mug meeting perhaps sometime in January. And um, I'll ask Heather to just do the same, try to get a poll together to figure out a good time for everyone. But be open for any ideas on topics or how to get some more people involved in this group. Sounds good. Um, yeah, yeah, Beth, as I said, I'll, I'll, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Walter. Yeah. Everyone talking at once or no one? I was just going to say, I'll advertise this mug at the Huey conference in three weeks' time, so or four weeks' time, whenever it is. Um, so, you know, hopefully people will become, more people will become aware of it. We may seem to new faces then. That's great. That's great. If you get any sense of topics of what people would, you know, what would might attract different people to attend, please share that with us too, Roger. Okay, we'll do. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Christina and Keith. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice rest of your day. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye.